So I made this. It looks absolutely beautiful, doesn't it? In this video, I'll be showing you how you can make it from scratch too. To start, I'm opening my 3D design app and design all the parts that I need for this project. I'm using Shaper 3D for iPad, but you can use any 3D design app for this project. By the way, this is my very first YouTube video, so if you enjoy what you see and would like to see more projects like this one in the future, a like or subscribe will be greatly appreciated. Thank you. This is how all the parts look after I finish designing them. It includes the actual frame of the device, the pump structure, the housing for all the components, and the side panels. Here are all the parts after 3D printing. I decided to go white for the main housing uh, because it matches the snow better. This is the water pump propeller, the magnet holder disc, a couple of bearings, and the shaft holder. The shaft and the bearings are salvaged from a DC motor. For this project, I decided to make the PCB myself because it's not really worth waiting a lot for this tiny PCB to arrive, so I just decided to make it myself using the toner transfer method. I'm planning on using a touch switch for this project, so this board actually serves as a relay board to control all the components with the signal from the touch sensor button. After finishing the design and refining it, I printed it out on a piece of glossy paper and cut the shape out. And align the design with the PCB and stick it into place with a couple pieces of tape. and use a hot iron to melt the toner and transfer it to the surface of the PCB. Then I put the PCB into a bowl of water to soak the paper and make it easier to peel it off. After removing all the paper, you'll see that the design has been completely mirrored onto the PCB surface. The next step will be to put the PCB into a solution of iron 3 chloride so that all the excess copper is removed. Then you'll see that the, all the PCB traces have been completely etched out. After scrubbing off all the toner from the surface, you'll have a nice clean PCB. You can drill the holes and then you're done. Next, we put all the components on the board. We use a 5 volt relay for switching, a 5 volt linear regulator, a couple of 1 watt resistors to fit the LEDs of the light pole, and a couple of diodes, one as a rectifier and one as a flyback for the relay. Then we solder all the components in place. And then our control PCB is ready. For switching the device on and off, I'm using a touch button, one of these cheap touch switch modules. I remove all the pins, tin the pads with solder, and solder in three wires. The touch switch that I'm using actually has a backlight and I want it to shine through the casing. To do this, I fill up the power icon hole with hot glue 
The hot glue actually acts as a diffuser for the light and fills up the cavity. I press in the touch switch. I then let the hot glue completely cool down and solidify and then I use a razor blade to cut off the excess. This way we have a nice touch switch with a diffused backlight. For the internal pump assembly, a plastic film separator should be utilized to isolate the impeller from the centrifugal forces generated by the magnetic drive ring below the impeller, thereby maintaining optimal pump performance. To achieve this, I created a paper template, affixed it to the plastic film and cut off the film to match the desired shape. One of the primary objectives of this project is to achieve a smooth and silent operation. To meet this requirement, I determined that the optimal solution is to design a custom internal pump incorporating a magnetic drive system. The system utilizes high strength neodymium magnets, each measuring 8mm in diameter and 2mm in thickness on the propeller side. The magnets are arranged in an alternating polarity configuration such that each magnet is oriented opposite to the polarity of the adjacent magnet on the either side. The magnets are secured to the shaft using a 3D printed magnetic disc with each magnet bonded to the disc using a high strength two-part epoxy adhesive. Proper alignment is crucial as even minor deviations can result in vibrations and undesirable acoustic noise. So take your time and align the magnets as well as you can. To secure the shaft in position, one of the bearings salvaged from a small DC motor is bonded to the bottom of the pump housing. The small indentation integrated into the 3D design serves as a centering guide to ensure precise alignment. The other bearing is heat pressed into the shaft's bracket using a soldering iron. The magnetic drive ring with the shaft attached is then inserted into the bottom bearing. The film separator is subsequently positioned above it and bonded in place ensuring that it remains free of contact with the underlying components. The impeller is then positioned onto the shaft, after which the shaft bracket is installed on top and secured using the same high strength epoxy adhesive. To drive the pump, I opted to use the motor from an inexpensive 12V DC brushless fan. These motors are highly efficient, operate with minimal noise, and most importantly, are well suited for continuous operation, which is a key objective of this project. On the drive side, the same diameter magnets are used, however, these magnets are quite a bit thicker at 5mm thick, and are arranged in the same alternating pattern as the propeller side. Given that these magnets are heavier than those on the propeller side, precise alignment with the center of the fan motor hub is essential to eliminate unwanted vibrations. To secure these magnets in place, the same high strength two-part epoxy adhesive is employed. The water channel and pump funnel components are then installed. Prior to installation, they are bonded together using the same high strength epoxy adhesive to ensure a secure and watertight assembly. The entire assembly is then installed using a slow curing silicon sealant, which is first applied and evenly spread over the mating surfaces before the components are joined. A small flap cut from the same plastic film is installed at the pump inlet to improve water flow and overall performance. An additional piece is shaped and placed in the ramp section to create a smooth surface, allowing snow particles to glide efficiently. To construct the light pole, I'm using 5mm SMD LEDs in combination with 3D printed components. First, enameled copper wire is soldered to the LEDs. The wire is threaded through the individual segments of the light pole 
and the segments are initially secured together using super glue. A clear epoxy adhesive is then applied around the LEDs to make them watertight and protect the wires and soldered connections from oxidation. Next, the light pole is attached to the floor piece, which features integrated openings to permit passage of snow particles and water. The bench consists of four 3D printed components, which are bonded together using super glue and subsequently attached to the floor assembly. Next, the lamp wires are routed through the opening at the bottom of the frame assembly and the floor piece is secured in place. Next, silicone sealant is applied to seal the gaps along the sides of the floor piece and spread around the frame in preparation for installing the glass panels. For this step, white silicone sealant is used instead of clear to make it easier to identify any missed areas during application. Before installing the glass panels, clean their inner surfaces with isopropyl alcohol to ensure they are completely free of contaminants and to prevent the growth of mold or bacteria inside the container. After the glass panels are installed, a small 3D printed plastic covers are glued into place to conceal the adhesive joints along the sides and enhance the overall appearance of the device. The touch sensor wires are soldered to the control board alongside the input power wires. These wires are additionally secured on the opposite side with hot glue to prevent detachment or damage from movement. The light pole wires are then soldered in place with each LED powered through an individual resistor and sharing a common ground connection. A DC power jack is also soldered to the input wires with a small plastic spacer added to ensure sufficient clearance inside for the motor to operate freely. To install the motor, a piece of paper towel is folded several times to prevent the magnets from directly contacting the plastic surface, allowing them to hover above it. The motor is then secured in place. After installation, the paper towel should be removed. Components are initially secured with super glue, followed by the application of a high strength two part epoxy adhesive to provide additional durability. With this, all internal components are assembled. The motor is powered using a 9 volt regulator instead of the full 12 volts to ensure smoother and quieter operation. The regulator is cooled with a layer of thick aluminum tape combined with thermal compound attached to the side of the housing. To fill the container, a small amount of isopropyl alcohol is first added to inhibit long-term mold and bacteria growth. The container is then filled with distilled or deionized water. The device can be powered using any 9 to 12 volt power supply capable of providing at least one amp of current. Before adding the snow particles, the machine should be turned on so that the pump facilitates mixing with the water, preventing clumping. Next, gradually add the snow particles using a tool to stir them into the water and help them sink, preventing them from remaining on the surface. Now gradually add a small amount of cornstarch to the water to create a slightly cloudy appearance, achieving a misty effect. Next, apply the same high strength epoxy adhesive to the inner surface of the top to bond the components together followed by a continuous bead of silicone sealant around the perimeter to ensure waterproofing. And with that, we're done.
compact tabletop lamp with a mesmerizing one-of-a-kind effect. I can already see ways to improve it, so if you'd like to see an upgraded version, let me know in the comments, along with your suggestions. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking, sharing and subscribing to support the creation of more content like this. Thanks for watching.